Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was organizing his bananas. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. Oh, a visitor. Mr. Monkey loves having visitors, almost as much as he loves organizing bananas. Who could it be? It's Miss Squirrel. Hello, Miss Squirrel. What can I do for you today? Mr. Monkey, I'm so glad you're here. I have a big problem. Big, big, big. It's driving me nutty. Wow, what is it, Ms. Squirrel? There's something wrong with my car. It stopped working. I had to push it all the way here. Oh, no. Let me take a look at it right away. Mr. Monkey checks the car. He checks the engine. He checks the windshield wipers. He even checks the air conditioner. So, what's wrong with my car, Mr. Monkey? In a nutshell, you've got nuts. A lot of them. They're all over your car, clogging things up. That's why it stopped working. Well, that explains it. I have been squirreling away my nuts for the winter. See? I've got acorns, pine nuts, walnuts, and almonds. Sometimes, I lose track of how many of each that I have. Because I lose track, when I go to the store, I, I can't remember how many I have of each kind, so I just buy more of all of them. Oh, oh, what can I do, Mr. Monkey? Mr. Monkey studies Ms. Squirrel's nutty mess of a car. Mr. Monkey has an idea. He swings off to his workbench. Let's see. Ms. Squirrel's car won't start because there are nuts in every nook and cranny. She can't keep track of all the nuts she has, so she just keeps getting more. What Ms. Squirrel needs is help organizing her nuts. Mr. Monkey knows exactly how to help. First, he'll need some materials. He needs four jars, one big sheet of wood, and a bunch of nuts and bolts. <laughs> no, not those kinds of nuts. There we go. Now Mr. Monkey just needs one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! I know how to fix your problem, Miss Squirrel. Miss Squirrel? Sorry, sorry, Mr. Monkey. I just popped out to the store to get another bag of nuts. It looked like I was low on acorns. Hmm, hmm. I didn't even know I had a trunk. <laughs> Mr. Monkey gets to work. He puts the big piece of wood in the trunk. Then he cuts four holes into the wood. One. Two. Three. Four. Next, he labels the holes with a drawing of each kind of nut. Then he adds the jars. And finally, he secures it all with the nuts and bolts. Mr. Monkey's work is done. Ooh, what is it, Mr. Monkey? Storage for all your nuts. Acorns go there, pine nuts in there, walnuts down there, and almonds there. Every nut has its place. Test it out. Acorns, pine nuts, walnuts, almonds. 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 Amazing! Now I can see them, and I'll never buy more than I need. Mr. Monkey, you've solved my problem.
problem. Another satisfied customer. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to sorting his bananas. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was busy balancing bananas. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. When the garage bell rings, it means Mr. Monkey has a visitor. Why, it's young Turtle. Hello, Turtle. How can I help you? Oh, Mr. Monkey, I've had no end of trouble with my bicycle. It's too tipsy and wobbly, and I keep falling off. I'd really like to ride it without falling off. No one likes falling, especially when it's so hard to get back up. Mr. Monkey, can you fix my bike so it isn't so wobbly and tipsy? Mr. Monkey takes a good look at Turtle. Then he takes a good look at Turtle's bike. First, Mr. Monkey checks the wheels. They seem the right amount of round. Then he checks the seat. Hmm, <laughs> seems the right amount of bouncy. Finally, he checks the horn. Just the right amount of honk. The bicycle appears to be in working order. Maybe the problem isn't that the bike isn't right, but that the bike isn't right for Turtle. Maybe young Turtle needs a different bike to ride. Mr. Monkey has an idea, and you know what that means. Off to his workbench. There are three different types of cycles that people ride. Some cycles have one wheel. They are called unicycles. See, it only has one wheel. You need very good balance to ride one of these, as you only have one wheel to balance on. Some cycles have two wheels, like young turtles. Those are called bicycles. See, one wheel and two wheels. These can be kind of wobbly, and you need pretty good balance to ride one of them. But some people ride cycles with three wheels. Those are called tricycles. See? One wheel, two wheels, and three wheels. They aren't as wobbly, and they're a little easier to ride. They're perfect for beginners. There's a type of cycle that's just right for each person. Young Turtle is just starting to learn how to ride, so a bicycle might be a little too advanced for him at first. Mr. Monkey has a plan. First, he needs to gather some materials. Mr. Monkey needs a wheel, one pipe, and some nuts and bolts to put it all together. That just leaves one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Young Turtle loves to watch Mr. Monkey work. He's wondering what Mr. Monkey is doing. Ooh. Mr. Monkey has made the most amazing tricycle ever. It's a tricycle made just for Turtle. In fact, it's a Turtle tricycle. And the best part, it has three wheels. One, two, and three. So Turtle won't fall down while he's learning to ride. Turtle loves it. He rides around and around. Around and around and around and around and around and around. 
Young Turtle is the happiest turtle ever. And his tricycle is the best tricycle ever, because it's just for him. Thank you, Mr. Monkey, for my wonderful tricycle. <laughs> Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey swings back up to his hammock. Now let's get back to balancing those bananas. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was guessing the weight of his bushel of bananas, when suddenly, the garage bell rang. Who could it be? It's Mr. Coyote, the carnival barker. Step right up, Mr. Monkey, step right up. Hurry, 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 I need your help. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, Mr. Coyote. What seems to be the problem? Cracks and scrapes, bents and dents, Mr. Monkey. My cars have got them all and I don't know what's to be done about it. Uh, which cars? I don't see any. Why, my bumper cars. Sure, the kids are having fun, but any more bumps like these and it'll spell disaster. They'll go from bumper cars to broken cars. Hmm, let me take a look at them. Mr. Monkey checks one of the bumper cars. He checks the battery. It looks okay. Then he checks the steering wheel. It turns all right. He even checks the pedals. They go and stop just fine. Oh, Mr. Monkey, what's wrong with my bumper cars? Step right up and tell me. Don't be shy. Well, the bumper cars work just fine. The problem is... There's nothing on them to bump with. They're just crashing cars. Well, if this ain't just a dilly of a pickle, what can I do, Mr. Monkey? Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Let's see. Mr. Coyote's bumper cars are supposed to bump and bounce, but instead, they crash and crack. What Mr. Coyote needs is something to cushion the outside of his bumper cars to soften the impact when they bump. Mr. Monkey has a plan. He just needs some soft, bouncy materials. If Mr. Monkey covers the outside of the bumper cars with something soft and bouncy, that would keep the bumper cars from breaking. He'll also need some rope to keep them from falling off the bumper cars. And of course, he'll need... his trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, he uses his monkey wrench to get a spare tire down from the ceiling. He then finds a mattress, an inflatable pool tube, and a bunch of rope. Feast your eyes upon the greatest spectacle you've ever seen. A monkey repairs a batch of bashed and broken bumper cars. Yay! Mr. Monkey stretches the tire around the first bumper car. Next, he gets the pool tube around the second bumper car. Now that's a winning ring toss if I ever seen one. You get a prize. Mr. Monkey then inflates the pool tube and ties it in place. Mr. Monkey folds the mattress in half and ties it together and puts it around the last bumper car, wrapping it nice and tight. And that's a wrap, folks. Mr. Monkey, the bumper cars are looking simply bumpy. Go ahead and give them a try.
All right, kids, it's time for the thrill ride of a lifetime. Well, ain't that a how do you do, Mr. Monkey? You saved my bumper cars from breaking. I can't thank you enough, but I can upgrade your prize to the big cuddly monkey. All right, kids, let's get these bumper cars back to the carnival. Another satisfied customer. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to guessing the weight of his bananas. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was sound asleep in his hammock, dreaming about bananas. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. When the garage bell rings, it means there's a visitor. And Mr. Monkey loves visitors, almost as much as dreaming about bananas. Mr. Lion has come for a visit. Mr. Monkey, I have a problem. There's something wrong with my Jeep. It just doesn't sound right. Mr. Monkey takes a good look at Mr. Lion's Jeep. First, he checks the engine. But it sounds like an engine should sound. It's not too quiet. Next, he checks the doors. But they seem to be making the normal sort of noise that doors make. They aren't too quiet. Even the windshield wipers make the right amount of noise. They're not too quiet either. This sounds like a normal Jeep to me. Ah, my goodness, Mr. Monkey, no, no, no. It's the horn, Mr. Monkey, the horn. Uh, allow me to demonstrate. Ah, uh, it just won't do. Mr. Monkey gets an idea. He goes to his special box of noisemakers. There must be something in this box that will work. Mr. Monkey tries the first noisemaker. No, 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 it's just too clowny. Mr. Monkey tries the second noisemaker. No, 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 that one's just too bicycly. Mr. Monkey tries the last noisemaker. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Monkey, but that just isn't right either. It should sound something like this. Mr. Monkey gets an idea, an absolutely perfect idea. Off to his workbench. Mr. Lion came in because his Jeep wasn't sounding quite right. So first, Mr. Monkey tried the clown horn. But that was too clowny. Then Mr. Monkey tried the bicycle bell. But that was too bicycly. Next, he tried the giant horn. But that wasn't right for Mr. Lion either. Mr. Monkey has a plan. All he needs are some materials. One large sheet of metal, a piece of pipe and a square piece of wood, and six bolts. And of course, Mr. Monkey needs one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. it's time to attach the bolts. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Mr. Monkey's work is complete. What is it, Mr. Monkey? Try it out. Give a roar, Mr. Lion. <laughs> Mr. Monkey, this is absolutely perfect. Now my Jeep sounds just right. Another satisfied customer. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to his nap. That's better. <laughs> Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was organizing his tools. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. A visitor. Mr. Monkey loves having visitors. Who could it be? Oh, uh, hello there. Uh, I'll be right with you. Hello? Uh, hello again. Uh, just one moment. I, I just need to hang this... Hello? Mr. Monkey is very confused. How can the same person be in three different places at once? Mr. Monkey can't believe his eyes. Standing before him isn't one visitor, or two visitors for that matter, but three visitors. No wonder Mr. Monkey was confused. His visitors look exactly the same. That's because his visitors are the meerkat triplets. Myrna, Marty, and Maribel Meerkat. Nice to meet you three. Uh, what can I do for you today? Mr. Monkey, we entered the Meerkat Motorcycle Contest, and guess what? We won! And the grand prize was three motorcycles. Wow! Congratulations! Thanks! We love riding our motorcycles, but we have a problem. You see, we really like to stay together all the time, but these motorcycles must be broken because we keep going, going in different directions. directions. I'll go left, I'll go right, and I'll go straight through. We just can't seem to stay together. Can you help us, Mr. Monkey? Interesting. Let me see what I can do about that. Mr. Monkey checks the motorcycles. He checks the tires. He checks the engines. He even checks the seats. So can you help us, Mr. Monkey? We'd really love to ride together. Hmm, everything seems fine with your motorcycles. Mr. Monkey has an idea. He heads off to his workbench. Let's see. The meerkats love riding their motorcycles, but they also like to stay together. And three different motorcycles means they can go in three different directions. Mr. Monkey needs to figure out how to make the meerkats stick together. He'll need four metal bars. One, two, three, four. And eight nuts and bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And of course... His trusty... I know how to fix your problem, Myrna, Marty, and Maribel. Magnificent! Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, Mr. Monkey pushes the motorcycles so they're beside each other. One, two, three. Then, Mr. Monkey takes the four metal bars to connect the motorcycles together. Two in the front, one, two, and two more in the back, three and four. Finally, Mr. Monkey uses the eight nuts and bolts to connect it all together. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Ta-da! It's your very own three-seater motorcycle. Now you can always stick together when you ride. Try it out. This is amazing! It's exactly what we wanted! Now we'll never be apart! Thanks for the help, Mr. Monkey! There go one, two, three satisfied customers. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to organizing his tools. And organizing his bananas. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was busy decorating his garage for a big party. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. A visitor! Mr. Monkey loves visitors. Almost as much as he loves parties. Who could it be? Hot Diggity Dog. It's Mr. Monkey's friend, Little Doggy, in his wheelchair. Hello, little doggy, says Mr. Monkey. Are you here for the party? I sure am. I was so excited that I came early to help decorate. Mr. Monkey is happy to have some help. He gets his box of decorations and gives some to little doggy. Mr. Monkey's garage looks amazing. But just then, little doggy sighed. <sighs> what is it, little doggy? asks Mr. Monkey. Well, Mr. Monkey, it's just that the garage looks so fun and festive, and my wheelchair looks so ordinary. Mr. Monkey is surprised to hear this. He thinks little doggy's wheelchair is amazing. It allows him to get everywhere he needs to go. Mr. Monkey checks the wheels. Then he checks the brakes. He even checks out the seat. Well, everything seems to be in tip-top shape. Oh, my wheelchair is working fine, Mr. Monkey. It just doesn't have any... Pizzazz. Mr. Monkey wonders if there's something he can do to help make Little Doggy's wheelchair more exciting for the party. Off to his workbench. Little Doggy loves his wheelchair, but he wishes it was more festive for the party. Maybe Mr. Monkey can decorate Little Doggy's wheelchair. What kind of decorations does Little Doggy like? Well, Mr. Monkey knows that Little Doggy loves ribbons and streamers, but he especially loves balloons. Now Mr. Monkey just needs one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey is ready to get started but he wants this to be a surprise. Cover your eyes, little doggy. No peeking, little doggy, says Mr. Monkey. It's time for the balloons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. All right, little doggy, open your eyes. Wow! 
little doggy loves his fancy new wheelchair. Whoops! Mr. Monkey may have used too many balloons. There! Now little doggy is the life of the party! Another job well done. And just in time, too, because it's party time! Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was getting ready for some fun in the sun. When all of a sudden, the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. He loves having visitors. Who could it be? It's Monsieur Bulldog. Hi there, Monsieur Bulldog. Bonjour, Monsieur Monkey. How do you do? Very well, thank you. How are you today? Moi? I am terrible! I was planning to pedal my bicyclette to the park today so I could run with the butterflies and eat my baguette in the beautiful sunshine. But I have a very, very big problem. What is it, Monsieur Bulldog? I will demonstrate. Ah, now regard. Le problème. Do you see? Mr. Monkey can see. Monsieur Bulldog's legs are too short to reach the pedals. I cannot ride my bicyclette in the park like this. What about the butterflies? What about my baguette? The day she is ruined! <laughs> what is a French bulldog like me to do, Monsieur Monkey? Can you help me? <laughs> well, let's take a look. Mr. Monkey checks the bicycle. First, he checks the little tire. Then, he checks the big tire. Then, he checks the basket. He even checks the pedal. Everything seems to be in working order. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Monsieur Bulldog, I think I have a solution to your problem. Oh, merci, merci. I would love nothing more than to ride to the park today and see all of the beautiful butterflies. Mr. Monkey swings off to his workbench. Let's see. Monsieur Bulldog wants to ride his new bicycle, but his little legs are too short to reach the pedals. Mr. Monkey needs to find a way to help Monsieur Bulldog pedal his bike. Mr. Monkey has an idea. But first, he'll need some supplies. He'll need four blocks of wood, two short pieces and two tall pieces, two loops of rubber, plus eight bolts and eight nuts. And of course, his trusty monkey wrench. I know just how to fix your problem, Monsieur Bulldog. With these, how you say, blocks of wood? Mr. Monkey gets to work. Mr. Monkey starts with the first pedal. He'll need one of his short pieces of wood and one of his tall pieces of wood, plus four of his bolts and four of the nuts. One, two, three, and four. And he'll take one of his loops of rubber. That leaves Mr. Monkey with half of his materials remaining to do the same thing on the other pedal. Mr. Monkey is all done. Incroyable! 
Hop on, Monsieur Bulldog. Take it for a spin. All right. Allons-y. Let's go. <laughs> you have done it, Monsieur Monkey. Now I can cycle to the beautiful park on my bicyclette. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Monsieur Monkey. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye. I am coming, my beautiful butterflies. <laughs> Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey goes and gets his own bicyclette. And now, Mr. Monkey, it's time to put the pedal to the metal. Let's go! Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was working on his afternoon painting when suddenly the garage bell rang. When the garage bell rings, it means Mr. Monkey has a visitor in his garage. Mr. Monkey loves visitors. Let's go see who it could be. Why, it's Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Monkey is always happy to see his friend Mr. Chameleon. Hello, Mr. Monkey. I just found my favorite red jacket. Funny thing, now I'm red. I was wondering, do you think you could paint my car red to match? That's one of the many fun things about Mr. Chameleon. Sometimes he turns the color of whatever he touches. And today, he's apparently turned red. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I better be on my way in my bright red car. Another satisfied customer. Now that Mr. Monkey's job is all done, he can get back to working on his painting. The garage bell. Another visitor. It's Mr. Chameleon again. Only this time he's... orange? Mr. Monkey, would you believe it? I just found this bright orange hat. Only now, I'm orange. Could you paint my car orange so it matches? Sure, why not? Mr. Monkey can paint the car orange. Oh, that's just great, Mr. Monkey. Thank you so much. Now that Mr. Monkey's job is finished, it's time for him to get back to his painting. Hey, Mr. Monkey. I've got this pair of yellow boots. Yellow boots, Mr. Monkey. You do not find these every day. I don't suppose you could repaint my car yellow to match. A green shirt, Mr. Monkey. My favorite blue jeans. Look at my fancy purple tie. I've got my nice red jacket on again, Mr. Monkey. But uh, I was wondering, could you paint my car red again? Poor Mr. Monkey. He can't keep painting Mr. Chameleon's car forever. What can he do? He heads to his workbench to try and come up with a solution. Mr. Monkey needs to fix this problem, but what color can he paint a car when he needs every color? First, Mr. Chameleon needed his car to be painted red to match his red jacket. Then he needed his car painted orange to match his orange hat. Then he needed his car painted yellow to match his yellow boots. Then he needed his car painted green to match his green shirt. Then he needed his car painted blue to match his favorite blue jeans. And finally, he needed his car painted purple to match his purple tie. There must be some way to make Mr. Chameleon's car match with all the colors of Mr. Chameleon's clothing and Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Monkey's got an idea, but before he can get started, he's going to need his trusty monkey wrench. Whoops. I mean his <clears throat> trusty paintbrush. Mr. 
Mr. Monkey has done it. Mr. Monkey made Mr. Chameleon's car a rainbow. Oh, Mr. Monkey, I am so happy. Not only is my car red, orange, and yellow, but it's also green, blue, and purple. It will match everything I own. Thank you so much, Mr. Monkey. You've made my car absolutely perfect. Now that Mr. Monkey's job is done, he can get back to finishing his painting. Magnifique, Monsieur Monkey. See you next time. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was getting ready for Valentine's Day. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. Who could it be? It's Miss Monkey. Oh, uh, what a surprise. H hello there, Miss Monkey. Hello, Mr. Monkey. What can I do for you today? You see, I have these two scooters. I can ride one scooter. And I can ride the other scooter. But I can't ride both scooters together. Oh, what's the point of owning two scooters if I can only use one at a time? Is there any way you can help me, Mr. Monkey? That is a problem, Miss Monkey. Let me take a look at these scooters. Mr. Monkey checks the scooters. He checks the handlebars. All seems to be working there. He checks the tires on the first scooter. Then the tires on the second scooter. They appear to be in working order. He even checks the scooter decks. Seems sturdy. Everything seems to be in working order, Miss Monkey. Well, of course they work just fine, but it sure would be nice to use them together. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Miss Monkey, I think I may have a solution to your problem. Would you like to join me at the workbench and we can figure it out together? <laughs> Let's go, Mr. Monkey! And with that, Mr. Monkey and Ms. Monkey head to Mr. Monkey's workbench. Let's see. Miss Monkey has two scooters, but she can only scoot around on one of them at a time. Mr. Monkey needs to figure out a way that Ms. Monkey can use both scooters together. He could put the two scooters together and make one wide scooter. No, that won't work. The scooter is too wide to scoot on. Mr. Monkey could put the scooters back to back, but then Miss Monkey wouldn't know if she was coming or going. Mr. Monkey has an idea, but he's going to need some supplies. Mr. Monkey needs two pipes, two flags, a red one and a blue one, two nuts, and finally, two bolts. That just leaves one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. Mr. Monkey places the blue flag on top of the first pipe, and then he places the red flag on top of the second pipe. Then Mr. Monkey attaches the first pipe to the first scooter with a nut and a bolt. And then he attaches the second pipe to the second scooter with his last nut and bolt. Um, Mr. Monkey, is it finished? Yes, all done. The problem is you have two scooters, but only one of you. But if there were two monkeys, 
Pinkies to ride the scooters. Then they could both ride the scooters together. Mr. Monkey, would you like to join me for a scooter ride in the park? I'd be honored, Miss Monkey. Monkey Mechanic was hanging out in his hammock. He had been working awfully hard lately and was looking forward to finally relaxing and catching up on his banana eating. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. That means Mr. Monkey has a visitor. I wonder who it could be. It's Mr. Sloth. Hello, Mr. Sloth. What can I do for you today? Mr. Monkey, my car is too fast. I need it to go. Slower. Sure, Mr. Sloth. I can see if I could make your car go slower. Mr. Monkey was about to go get a better look at Mr. Sloth's car when suddenly... <laughs> Why, it's Ms. Rabbit. Mr. Monkey, you gotta help me. This car is just too slow. I got places to go, places to see. I gotta go, go, go. And this car just goes. Can you help me? Well, hello, Ms. Rabbit. I think I can help make your car go faster. First, let's get a better look at both your cars. First, Mr. Monkey checks the engines. They seem to be running in tip-top shape. Then he checks the steering wheels. They both seem to steer. Finally, Mr. Monkey checks the tires. Yep, they're both just the right amount of tiredness. Not too soft, not too tough. Well, now this is a puzzle. Both cars seem to be just fine. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Mr. Sloth's car is too fast. Ms. Rabbit's car is too slow. If only there was one fix that would fix both problems. One fix to fix them all. Mr. Monkey has a solution. But first he's going to need some supplies. Mr. Monkey gets a nice big piece of red fabric. Then he gets a nice long metal tube. Then he grabs some metal hooks and, of course, some metal bolts. Mr. Monkey is all set. He just needs one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. Mr. Monkey is all done. A big red curtain? Mr. Monkey, it's a big, big, big red curtain, says Ms. Rabbit. That's right. Mr. Sloth's car was too fast for him. And your car, Ms. Rabbit, was too slow. So the one perfect solution to solve both your problems is you should be driving each other's car. Mr. Monkey, it's perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Monkey. Super great job. Another satisfied customer. 
And with that, Mr. Monkey gets back to what he was doing before. Ah, just the banana eating break Mr. Monkey needed. This is going to take a while. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was relaxing in his hammock when all of a sudden, the garage bell rang. Oh boy, a visitor. Who could it be? Look, it's Mr. Giraffe. Hello, Mr. Giraffe. How can I help you today? There's something wrong with my car, Mr. Monkey. Ever since I started driving it, my neck has been really sore. I think this car is broken. Mr. Monkey checks the car. He checks the engine, the tires, and the shocks. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong. In fact, this car is in tip-top shape. But there must be something wrong with it, Mr. Monkey. My neck is so achy. Mr. Monkey tries to get a closer look at Mr. Giraffe's neck. But Mr. Giraffe is very tall. And Mr. Monkey is much shorter. Let's see. Mr. Giraffe is very tall. But his car is not so tall. Mr. Monkey has an idea. He needs to find a way for the very tall Mr. Giraffe to fit in his not-so-tall car. First, he will need some supplies. He'll need one, two, three, four pieces of wood. And they are all the same size and length. He's going to make a square. A square has four equal sides. Like this. There. Now he just needs some bolts to attach the square to the car. Eight bolts should do the trick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Mr. Monkey is just about ready to head back to the car, but he's going to need one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! What is Mr. Monkey up to? Mr. Monkey is almost finished. He just needs to fasten the square down with the bolts. How many bolts did Mr. Monkey have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Mr. Monkey is all done, and he's very proud of his handiwork. He invites Mr. Giraffe to test it out. Amazing! Mr. Monkey, you've solved my problem. He made him a sunroof. Or rather, a giraffe roof. Mr. Giraffe's neck was hurting because he was too tall to fit inside his not-so-tall car. But now that Mr. Giraffe has his giraffe roof, he can sit comfortably without any more neck aches. Goodbye, Mr. Giraffe. Don't forget your sunscreen. And with that, Mr. Monkey swings back to his hammock to finish reading his magazine and eating his banana.
Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was working on his puzzle when all of a sudden the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. He loves having visitors. Who could it be? It's Ms. Poodle. Hello, Ms. Poodle. Oh, Mr. Monkey. I've got a problem and I'm hoping you can help me. Every time I go to get my hair done, it gets ruined as soon as I drive away. I can't keep any of my fancy hairdos. My car just ruins them. Mr. Monkey thinks this is rather odd. Why would a car want to ruin a hairdo? Mr. Monkey takes a look at Ms. Poodle, then takes a look at Ms. Poodle's car. He checks the tires. He checks the engine. He even checks the windshield. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Miss Poodle, I think I may have a solution. Well, Mr. Monkey, I have a hair appointment. The car must be fixed by the time I come back, or else my hair will be ruined again. I'll be back by four o'clock. Mr. Monkey takes a look at the clock on the wall of his shop. The big hand is at the 12, and the little hand is at the two. That means it's two o'clock. So in two more hours, it will be four o'clock. That gives Mr. Monkey two hours before Miss Poodle comes back. He better get to work. Let's head over to Mr. Monkey's workbench. Ms. Poodle's car is a convertible. That means it has no roof. When cars have a roof, it covers what's inside it and protects it from things like rain and wind. But Ms. Poodle's car doesn't have a roof. So when it's windy, her hair gets messy from the wind. What Ms. Poodle needs is a roof on her car. And Mr. Monkey knows exactly what kind of roof to make her. He thinks this nice round dome will work. Then he's going to need some bolts to attach the roof to the car. Four bolts should do the trick. One, two, three, and four. Now Mr. Monkey just needs one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey is almost finished. All he needs to do now is add the bolts. One bolt. And two bolts. Oh, Ms. Poodle's gonna be back soon. Let's finish the job. That makes three, and finally four. And not a minute too soon. Here comes Ms. Poodle. Oh my goodness, Mr. Monkey. What have you done to my convertible? Mr. Monkey wants to give it the ultimate test. Let's see how the dome works with some wind. It works. The roof is the perfect hairdo dome. Goodbye, Miss Poodle. Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey needs to get back to his puzzle. 